The various types of prison camps set up by Nazism became synonymous with pain and torture. They were infrastructures designed to perpetuate slavery, guarded all day and all night by German troops. However, some inmates are also remembered who, against all odds, staged several escape attempts with the aim of getting out of those places at any cost. One of the most incredible escapes was the one that took place in the Stalag Luft III camp, in which three inmates managed to flee right under the noses of Adolf Hitler's soldiers. In this new military history video we are going to learn about the tragic adventure lived by the prisoners who led the Great Escape. In Nazi Germany there were various infrastructures to contain prisoners. The concentration camps were focused on citizens who were imprisoned for their ethnic origin or political affiliation. These were connected to death camps, designed to kill hundreds of thousands of people. On the other hand, the Stalags were intended to house prisoners of war, who, with the exception of the Soviets, were treated somewhat better than regular prisoners. To talk about Stalag Luft III, it is necessary to travel to the city of Zagan, currently located in southwestern Poland. It was in that region, located less than 200 kilometers from Berlin, where the German Air Force installed a camp in May 1942 to detain British and American airmen captured in battle. That place was called Stamlager der Luftwaffe III, and was part of a total of six similar complexes, all intended to house prisoners of war of different nationalities. In general, they were kept alive both for forced labor and for future prisoner exchange negotiations. The Nazis wanted to make sure that prisoners couldn't escape from their detention centers. To do this, they took several measures, including raising the barracks several centimeters above the ground, which prevented tunnels from being built without the guards noticing. Later we'll see how the protagonists of the Great Escape circumvented these measures with care and ingenuity. Another obstacle was the very composition of the soil, which was gray and dark on the surface, and yellowish and sandy when excavated. This complicated both the concealment of the extracted substrate and the structural integrity of an underground corridor. The ground was dangerous and unstable, a tunnel could collapse with the slightest movement. The Nazis also installed several seismographic microphones in the surrounding area, to detect excavations and any disturbances in the terrain. Of course, the guards watched like eagles 24 hours a day, punishing the slightest deviation from permitted behavior. However, what the Germans did not count on was the ingenuity of prisoners eager to be free. At the same time, they did not take into account that they had introduced a master of escapes, the British soldier Roger Bushel, into that prison. This soldier, as well as many others, formed a kind of committee, and arranged their time to devise a plan that would allow them to escape from Stalag Luft III. Thus the planning stage was launched. The light bulb went on in 1943, when Big X, Bushel's codename, decided it would be best to dig three tunnels in different parts of the camp, through which 250 inmates would escape. First, it was necessary to carefully select the places where the corridors would be located, so that they would not be discovered by the eyes or ears of the guards. This took weeks, since, as we anticipated, the Nazis spared no security measures to detect escape attempts. The first of the tunnels would come out of the chimney, the second, from under the sinks, and the third, from under the base of a stove. To facilitate communication, each excavation was given its own name, Tom, Harry, and Dick. The goal of these choices was to take advantage of the only brick buildings that reached the ground to use as entrances. Once the decision was made, it was determined that the corridors would be located 10 meters below the ground to avoid annoying vibrations from the German vehicles, which could cause deadly landslides for the soldiers. Before continuing we want to invite you to discover our new channel, Military Might. Here we will carry out in-depth analyzes of the most powerful, modern and surprising weapons of war in the world. So, if you like military weaponry, you must check out Military Might. Let's go on with our video. Construction started fairly smoothly, but logistical problems soon began to mount. The first of them was precisely the possibility that the tunnels would collapse with the men inside. To solve it, the prisoners propped up the walls with wood from their bunks, planks from the barracks, and even showers. 
The second problem occurred when the inmates realized that the galleries lacked ventilation. In this case, their ingenuity was even greater, as they devised a series of breathing systems based on old cans and small nooks in the corridors themselves. However, there was a bigger problem to solve. Where to hide all the extracted earth? The prisoners devised some cloth bags hidden along the pants, which they filled with earth and, once outside the barracks, they opened them, letting them fall on the shoes. The task was arduous, but a perfect job of coordination between more than 250 people made the plan come out perfectly. However, the Nazi guards were not completely unprepared, they knew that a tunnel existed, but they were looking for it stealthily. Luck made the men of the Third Reich run into one of the corridors, Tom, what they did not imagine is that there were two others. The prisoners decided to bet everything on one card and started working solely on Harry, leaving Dick as a dirt store. After months of work, the escape committee finished the tunnel in March 1944. The result was incredible, a 102-meter-long corridor that included carts made with material stolen from the countryside, electric light, and various vents. On March 24, at half-past 10 in the evening, the breakout from the Stalag Luft III camp was carried out. That day, the first lucky ones entered the tunnel with the hope of finding their freedom on the other side. They only had to dig up at the end of the gallery to find their way out of the field, from there they would run into a nearby forest. Everything was going well, until they realized that, when they surfaced, they still had several meters to go before they were safe from the trees. They would be easy prey when they left, but there was no turning back. For hours, the inmates crawled down the corridor, praying that the guards would not notice the movement. They continued like this until 5 in the morning, when the alarm sounded and the Germans circled the field until they found the corridor. Panic spread among the inmates, who reacted in different ways. Those who were already outside ran into the forest. Others tried unsuccessfully to enter the corridor and eventually some returned to the center for fear of reprisals. Of the prisoners who managed to reach the forest, 11 immediately turned themselves in. Those in charge of the camp were stunned when they saw that 76 inmates were missing. The next morning, the German officers mounted search parties. Thus they managed to capture 73, of whom they shot 50. Only three soldiers, the Norwegians per Bergland and Jensmuller, and the Dutchman Bram van der Stock, managed to escape with their lives. With the end of the war, some of the prisoners regained their freedom, and those responsible for the mass shooting were prosecuted in the Nuremberg trials. Despite the fact that the escape plan ended in tragedy, it became a symbol of resistance against Nazism, inspiring films and books that recount the experiences of the soldiers who tried to flee Stalag Luft III. Thank you for staying until the end, subscribe to the channel and activate notifications to be aware of all our news. We will meet again in the next military history video.